Hi there, this is Pixel Cave and today we are taking a closer look at realm travel in Nightingale. Nightingale is an upcoming shared world survival crafting game that's all about exploration and adventure. You are a realm walker in an alternate Victorian fantasy world and as the name implies, you are wandering between realms. If you aren't familiar with Nightingale yet, we recommend checking out our All We Know So Far video, which provides a more general overview of the game. One of the main features of Nightingale is realm travel. As a realm walker who uses portals to explore the realms of the Fae, you end up lost in a labyrinth of these realms after a devastating event hit your homeworld. Your goal now is to survive and get back to Nightingale, the human's capital of magic and presumed last bastion of humanity. In order to find your way back, you must open inactive arcane portals to unknown realms in the search for anything that might help you on your journey. Each realm awaits you with adventure but also with danger. Portals you find within the Fey world can be activated by using realm cards. These can be crafted from resources, which once again can only be found by exploring various realms. So how exactly do these realm cards work? While realms are procedurally generated to ensure you never experience the exact same environment twice, realm cards give you a certain amount of control in regards to which type of realm you might encounter. You can combine a limited amount of realm cards to influence the parameters of a newly opened realm. There are three types of realm cards that can be crafted. Biome cards, major cards and minor cards. These cards influence the realm that will be opened based on the characteristics. For example, biome cards allow you to choose the type of environment of a realm. It was said that there will be three different biomes available for early access launch, swamp, desert and forest, with many more to be added over time. Major and minor cards allow you to determine other aspects of a realm. This could be something that ensures more creatures are present in a realm, maybe even more dangerous creatures, different resources, or encounters you come across and even things like day and night time, weather and similar modifiers. A key element regarding combining realm cards will be experimentation and observation. Realm cards might cause a different outcome depending on the cards they are combined with. They can also have a knock-on effect on the wildlife, resources and other events. For example, a realm card that creates a certain type of weather effect could impact the behavior of creatures or the availability of resources that are native to a specific biome. Most things will happen for a reason, so studying the effects of certain card combinations will be important if you want to open realms that are meaningful to you. We for one can't wait to expand our inventory of realm card recipes and try different or unusual realm card combinations. While you can use the same combination of realm cards to open up a realm in the future, the experience will never be exactly the same. It will be the same type of realm with the same characteristics, but the procedural engine will ensure it's still different. Now, let's talk about how these realm cards can be crafted. During your gameplay in Nightingale, you will either discover realm card recipes or earn them as rewards. As mentioned earlier, these recipes will require magical resources you can find throughout your travels. The more powerful realm cards you can craft, the rarer and harder the resources are to craft them. If you have friends who have different realm cards, you can also let them open a portal for you, allowing you to travel to a realm with modifiers you don't personally own. While the vast majority of content in Nightingale is designed to be enjoyable as single player, it has been said in an interview that groups of players can combine their realm cards to create more challenging realms and realms with higher difficulty also yield greater rewards, so that's something to keep in mind. Talking about friends, for early access it has been confirmed that up to 6 players can play together on one realm at any time. There are however plans to expand this limit throughout development. For instance, 10 players have been mentioned in the past. And while this limits your group number on any given realm, you can still play the game with as many friends as you wish in general. 
Nightingale provides one big shared world for all its players, who in turn can travel and explore different realms, or visit each other and group up for realm expeditions as long as invited. If some of your friends decide to explore a new realm and others want to stay behind and continue crafting and building, that's absolutely possible. You don't need to be in the same place. A few more things that might be good to know about realms. Once a realm has been opened, the portal to the realm will stay open until you decide to close it. Once closed, the realm is lost and you won't be able to reopen it, at least not the exact same one. It was also said that there is a 10 minute timer after closing a realm before it's gone for good. A realm's map size is roughly 4 square kilometers. And most resources won't respawn once scattered. However, seeing you can open up new realms indefinitely, there should be more than enough to explore and collect in the game. You will also be able to build structures in any realm, not only your respite realm. This is the realm you declare as your home realm and where your main base will be located. If you do build in other realms, it would most likely be temporary camps that provide you with a resting or crafting place, or potentially something that can support your attack or defense during encounters. We don't know yet if in addition to your respite realm you can have more than one portal open at the same time or if it's limited to two per player. Realms also feature dungeon-like experiences with more valuable rewards. This can be vaults, which are easier to find due to their temple-like entrances, or caves that can be well hidden and harder to discover. These experiences are geared towards smaller groups of players, but can also be soloed with the right strategy and tactics. Whatever challenges you might face, there is of course always the possibility of being defeated. When you die in a realm, you will respawn in the realm you declared as your respite realm. If this is a different realm from where you have died, you need to travel back to that realm again to pick up the lost content of your backpack. We don't know yet if there will be a way for others to revive you, but we imagine there could be. One last thing that the developers were really keen to stress out is that while they are aiming to add more and more realm cards to the game, in order to provide even more variety, adventure and replayability, there are no plans to monetize realm cards. At least not in terms of their core mechanics, which is providing players with new content. We are sure there will be a lot more to learn about realm travel and the functionality of realm cards, and we're looking forward to bringing you more updates about Nightingale in the months ahead. If you have enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please don't hesitate to subscribe, give us a thumbs up and hit that bell.